We have learned about spring mass system simple harmonic oscillators. Now we're going to study another kind of simple harmonic oscillators, the simple pendulum. A simple pendulum is a pendulum with all its mass concentrated at the end of the pendulum. If we ignore the mass of the string and pretend that this steel ball is very small like a point mass, I mean it is like a dot with all the mass concentrated in that little dot which we call point mass, then this can be called a simple pendulum. This pendulum has an equilibrium position. So if I stop it right here, that's the equilibrium position where the net force is zero. So if it starts at rest here, it would stay at rest. But if I move it away from its equilibrium position and let go, it will start oscillating pretty much is symmetrically about the equilibrium position. Now let's analyze the motion of a pendulum. Here we have a pendulum with length L and the mass M at the end of the string. This is the equilibrium position. And this is the position of the pendulum at one moment during the swing. Its angle to the vertical is theta and its position or the distance to the equilibrium is x. To show you that a pendulum is a simple harmonic oscillator, I have to show that the net force of the pendulum bob matches the net force equals to the negative kx format, just like a spring mass oscillator. So let's look at the forces on the pendulum bob. If we draw the force diagram, we have mg and uh, it's touching the string, so there is the tension from the string. And now I'm going to write the tension as F sub T, because we're using big T for period right now. The oscillating pendulum bob has two accelerations, centripetal acceleration and tangential acceleration. So I'm going to use a slanted coordinate system and uh, find the components for mg. So I'm going to make a rectangle that's slanted matching the coordinate system. And uh, the mg has a component going down this way and a component that's in the tangent direction. The tension here and mg's component along the radial direction, they provide the centripetal force. If the pendulum bob is not at the end point, then we have centripetal force. That's in the radial direction. It has nothing to do with the tangent direction. So they provide the centripetal force. They do not provide this uh, restoring force we're looking for. So I'm not going to worry about the forces in the radial direction. I'm just going to look at the force in the tangent direction. That's this little force over here. If that angle is theta, then this angle here is theta. That means uh, this is the cosine component adjacent to the angle, and that one is the sine component. So that force there is mg sine theta. So in the tangent direction, we have the net force equals to mg sine theta. And this mg sine theta pre provides the restoring force because if the pendulum bob goes to the right side, the restoring force pulls it back towards the equilibrium. So this is a restoring force. So I'm going to put the negative sign over there. Now, when the angle is very small, when the theta is very small, this one here is the in radians. So when the angle is very small, the sine theta, let's see, if I have this uh, triangle here, or it's actually a fan shape. But this one here, the, the, the angle between the tangent direction and the radial direction is a 90 degree angle. If this angle is very small, then this will look very much like a right triangle, which means uh, the length of the arc over here, the x, is kind of like the opposite side of this uh, right triangle. The length l would be about the same as the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So I can say if the angle is very small, then the sine theta is almost the same as the 
opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Since I want to try to match this to that format, I'm going to rearrange things a little bit. That will be mg over l times x. This mg over l is like the equivalent k for the pendulum. That's like negative kx. Since this net force matches that format, this shows that the pendulum is a simple harmonic oscillator, but only if the angle is very small. And we already know that the period of a simple harmonic oscillator, the spring mass system is 2 pi square root of m over k. For the pendulum, this will be the equivalent k, and this is 2 pi square root of m divided by its equivalent k is the mg over l. So the mass m would cancel, and we can simplify this to So this is the equation for the period of a simple pendulum, and you should memorize this. So the period of a pendulum depends on the length of the pendulum. The longer the pendulum, the longer the period. And also depends on the gravitational acceleration at that particular location. The higher the gravitational acceleration, the shorter the period. And since the mass cancels over here, the period of a simple pendulum does not have anything to do with the mass of the pendulum bob. So a simple pendulum is a simple harmonic oscillator only if the amplitude is very small. The smaller the amplitude, the more it is like a simple harmonic oscillator. When the amplitude is too big, it still oscillates. It's just that the oscillation will not be simple harmonic. And usually we consider perhaps 10 degrees as a small angle. So from the vertical to the amplitude angle. If this angle here is less than 10 degrees, so we consider it is a small angle. Also, the period of a pendulum does not depend on the mass of the pendulum bob. Because according to the period equation, 2 pi times square root of L over G, the period only depends on the length of the pendulum and the gravitational acceleration at that location. I have these two pendulums. Same length, but different mass at the end. I can set them into oscillation, and you will see that they have the same period and the same frequency. oscillating with small amplitude, with an angle that is 10 degrees or less. These pendulums are about 1 meter long. Please find their period of oscillation. Now the length of the pendulum is 1 meter, and we want to find the period which is 2 pi square root of L over G. So if I plug in the L is 1 meter, G is 9.8. Because I have to use a calculator, I have, might as well use 9.8. I don't have to round it to 10, although it, it's OK if you use 10. Now if you do this calculation, you'll get it is about 2 seconds. Because it turns out that the pi and the square root of 9.8, they are almost the same. So it's like they cancel over here. So the period is 2 seconds. What if I want to make a simple pendulum with half this period? If I want the period to be halved, what should I do? The period of a pendulum depends on the length of the pendulum and the gravitational acceleration at that location. So I think I can change the length of the pendulum. So I'm going to change the length. I just have to find out by what factor I have to change that. 
since the period equals to 2 pi square root of L over G, I know that the period is proportional to square root of L. I'm changing the period by a factor of 1 half. That means uh, the square root of L has to change by a factor of 1 half. And I can just square both sides. I'm going to get L is going to change by a factor of 1 fourth. So if I want to make a new pendulum with half the period, I will have to change the length to 1 fourth of 1 meter. Here I have a 25 centimeter long or 1 fourth of a meter long pendulum next to the one meter long one. If I set both of these into oscillation, you can see that the short one has half the period of the long one, which means twice the frequency of the long one. Right. 